Good morning and welcome to Parasitology and Mycology. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster and this is going to be part one of three for the malaria and other blood and tissue protozoa. The objectives of this presentation are going to be to list the four species of plasmodium that cause human infection, describe the life cycle of malaria, list morphological characteristics of the plasmodium species, Describe the pathway of malaria and its intermediate and definitive host. List other tissue protozoa that cause human infection and their key morphological characteristics. <clears throat> this lecture covers the protozoa phylum, which includes the class sporozoa and the four species of malaria to cause infection in humans. This includes Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium falciparum, and Plasmodium malariae. All are transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquito. Geographic distribution of malaria is present worldwide, but typically limited to tropical and subtropical areas. Malaria is not endemic to the United States, but occasionally infections do occur here. This is usually the result of international travel and not the bite from the female Anopheles mosquito occurring in the United States. Uh, transmission of malaria can also occur through sharing of contaminated needles from IV drug users, uh, contaminated blood stocks through blood transfusions, and congenital transmission can sometimes occur from infected mothers to uh, fetuses. <clears throat> These uh, pictures in this presentation are courtesy of the CDC. Uh, this one in particular uh, showcases the life cycle of malaria from the definitive host, the uh, Anopheles mosquito, and the intermediate host, the human, and it breaks those down into the exoerythrocytic cycle and the erythrocytic cycle. Uh, we'll jump in and talk about how infection occurs. Malaria infection begins with the bite of the infected female Anopheles mosquito. The bite introduces sporozoites into the blood's host uh, into the host's bloodstream. From there, the sporozoites travel to the liver and infect the hepatocytes, where they mature into schizonts. The schizonts grow to capacity with their internal merozoites. Once the schizon has grown to critical mass of the hepatocyte, the cell ruptures, releasing the merozoites into the bloodstream. This right here is the bite of the Anopheles mosquito occurring. The sporozoite travels into the liver, infects the hepatocytes. The hepatocytes, uh, the infected hepatocytes, develop the Schizonts. The schizonts grow with their internal merozoites. The merozoites rupture and begins the erythrocytic cycle of infection. Um, this happens when uh, the merozoites enter circulating red blood cells, uh, beginning the asexual stage of reproduction called schizogony. Uh, the merozoites infect the red blood cells where they then develop into young trophozoites. The trophozoites grow and develop into schizonts, where the schizont has their internal merozoites. Right here you can see the merozoites. It'll grow to capacity, rupture, and the merozoites will be released into the bloodstream to infect more red blood cells. Back at this stage where the merozoite infects the red blood cell, um, sometimes instead of a trophozoite developing into a schizont, the asexual stage of reproduction, this stage can occur where the sex-specific organs of malaria can grow and develop into what's called uh, the gametocyte. The gametocyte has male and female forms. Um, this isn't specific on what kind of gametocyte this is, but the male gametocyte are the microgametocytes and the female gametocytes are the macrogametocytes. 
these uh, again grow, develop, rupture, and release into the circulating bloodstream. Um, the circulating merozoites uh, are then picked up from a blood meal of the Anopheles mosquito, uh, where sexual reproduction will occur. And this happens when the microgametocyte penetrates the macrogametocyte in the stomach of the Anopheles mosquito, where it forms a zygote. The zygote then travels to the midgut and develops into an oocyst. The oocyst um, then ruptures and releases sporozoites that travel to the mosquito salivary gland, which is what was responsible for the initial infection in the intermediate host, the human. Some of the terms that we covered um, and that will occasionally be brought up throughout this presentation are the first stage of the trophozoite after infection of the red blood cell, the young trophozoite, or the ring stage. Uh, at this stage, the trophozoite contains a vacuole um, in the cytoplasm. The young trophozoite then starts to feed off of the hemoglobin of the infected red blood cell, developing hematin, uh, which gives it its darker internal color once stained. This is the developing trophozoite. On the left here, this is the young ring stage of the trophozoite. It begins to, di to digest the hemoglobin of the red blood cell and develops into a more developed trophozoite that you'll see on the right here. Both of these species happen to be Plasmodium vivax. More terms, uh, the schizont. The schizont again represents the asexual reproduction cycle of malaria and the schizont grows and develops its internal merozoites and right here on the left we see a developed schizont these little specks inside here are the merozoites um, what can also occur instead of a trophozoite developing into a schizont and releasing its merozoites the gametocyte cycle can occur. Um, this stage produces macrogametocytes or microgametocytes. Um, this happens to be a macrogametocyte on the right here. Uh, both of these images are Plasmodium vivax species. The schizon on the left with the developing merozoites and the gametocyte, the macrogametocytes, both of Plasmodium vivax. Uh, the sporozoite is the infective stage that's developed in the definitive host, the Anopheles mosquito, and then produced and harbored in the salivary glands of the malaria species, where it bites humans and uh, begins infection. Uh, other thing, other terms are Schuffner stippling. Schuffner stippling is seen um, in Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale. It doesn't always occur, uh, but its present represents uh, granular eosinophilic stippling that can sometimes be seen and can assist you in directing you to the right species of malaria. Again, it's seen both in Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium, Plasmodium ovale. So it's not a defining characteristic, but it does help eliminate two of the four species of malaria. Maurer's clefts can also occur. Uh, Maurer's clefts are heavy clefts of eosinophilic stippling, only seen in Plasmodium falciparum species. It's not always seen, but um, it is unique to Plasmodium falciparum. That's going to be the end of this part of the malaria and other blood and tissue protozoa. We're going to pick up next time with part two.